Welcome back, you join me once again for another tasty dose of Tutorial Tuesday. This week, we're gonna be talking about adding depth to your photos and how that can really transform your photography. Now, I really experimented with this a little bit with the A7 IV when I had my time with that. You can see the full review of that in the description and of course, a link to the camera itself. But there's lots of different ways that we can add depth to our photos, whether that be landscape, portrait, or really anything else. But really, we need to talk about what do we mean when we talk about adding depth? And what does that really do for our photography? Well, there's a few ways we can add depth to our photos. We can add geometric depth, so shooting down a path, through trees, things like that. Something where it feels like you're being drawn into the photo. Leading lines are great for this. That's when you have something maybe in the foreground that leads into the photo all the way to the subject. That's a great way of adding depth to your photo. We can add depth behind our subject in a portrait. So instead of having them stood near or against a wall, we can move them further away from the wall or turn and actually have much more depth behind them. That can do all kinds of things for your photo, including help if you wanna have a shallow depth of field. Having a lot of space and depth behind your subject can really help with a kind of a shallower depth of field feel to things, as opposed to being against a wall, which will be less kind of blurred out. We can play with light and shadow to kind of create a feeling of depth. And again, another kind of feeling where everything almost feels a bit tactile because of how kind of vivid the imagery is with light and shadow, even if it's in black and white. So how can we actually apply this to our photography? How can we think about depth when we're taking photos and how can that make for better photos and maybe even better overall photography? Well, let's start off by talking about landscape photography. So something that I look for a lot with landscape is to have layers within my photo. So depth in terms of layers. So I've got my subject, maybe it'll be a nice view, maybe in this case, for example, it'll be this lighthouse. And then I've got my foreground element, which is this kind of pathway leading through bushes. So not only does the foreground element in this situation frame the lighthouse, it also adds a visual interest that hopefully pulls the viewer into the photo. So the lighthouse is certainly the subject, but this pathway kind of pulls the viewer towards that lighthouse. And then of course you've got this lovely sunset sky as kind of the backdrop for the whole thing. That's kind of a three layered situation. So foreground, the subject, and then the background. And that is something that I look for as much as possible when taking landscape photos. As much as possible, I will try and incorporate these three layers into my photo. So a foreground, midground, and background, because it adds visual interest to the photo so that you don't just have kind of a nice view, which can be a nice photo, and it can be an absolutely stunning photo. But with a foreground element, you kind of have this feeling of depth, which gives a bit of scale to everything, gives a bit of a, a different feel. And like I say, if done in a certain way, can certainly draw the viewer's eye into the photo and absolutely towards your subject. Now with portrait photography, we can do a very similar thing. I'll often layer up portrait photos in absolutely the same way I would do landscapes. So I have a foreground element, which maybe frames my subject. I really like doing that. Have my subject and then maybe a background. Now, of course, shallow depth of field is a lovely way to take a portrait. I love that kind of look, that kind of dreamy, ethereal look. Well, that's much easier to accomplish with a larger kind of longer depth behind your subject. If you have your subject against the wall, like in this photo, for example, the wall is going to be much closer to the focal plane that you're taking the photo. Even if you shoot at something like f1.4, f1.8, something like that, and you're focused on the eye, if they're stood next to a wall, that wall is much closer to the eye, which is the focal plane, the wall is just here. Whereas if they take a few steps away from the wall, actually that wall is gonna be much more blurred out because it's further away from the focal plane. So adding depth there, can actually help with a shallower depth of field. Now, of course, you don't necessarily have to have a shallow depth of field. In fact, a lot of portraits look fantastic with a little bit more, you know, detail in the background, a little bit less of a blurred background. So you could absolutely have your subject stood next to a wall if you wanna add some detail from that wall in. Actually, this photo was done deliberately like that so that I could have details from the wall. I just like the way that the light was falling on it. And I like the way that it looked in general. If you wanted to use graffiti, for example, in this situation on your photo, if you wanted to have those details there, you absolutely would have your subject closer to the wall 
so you wouldn't have such a shallow depth of field, or of course you could stop down the aperture. When it comes to portrait photography or landscape or kind of an adventure photo, a bit like this one, a bit of depth can really help with a sense of scale and a sense of kind of the feel of the landscape, the feel of the environment. So an environmental portrait is great if you have a nice bit of depth. So like I say, with this photo here, we've got Matilda standing. She's very small in the frame and it feels very kind of adventurous because we've got a huge amount of depth, not necessarily front to back. We've got a little bit of foreground. We've got a little bit of background, which is the sky, but the depth of the photo is kind of more how vast this whole situation is, how vast this landscape is, and how small she is in the frame. We can also shoot a bit like we were earlier, down paths and things like that to add a sense of depth to our photo when it comes to portraits. So essentially having that kind of foreground element leading down to our subject. That's a great way of adding depth and kind of adding another visual element to your photo. Now we talked a little bit about light and shadow and how that can affect depth as well. And that's absolutely something I love playing around with. Now this is something that you can look for absolutely in the world. Shafts of light kind of hitting certain points can really add kind of volumetric depth to your photo, especially if there's a bit of mist or something like that, that can look fantastic and really help out with kind of this deep feeling, almost like you could reach in and touch something, but you can also do a little bit of dodging and burning in post, in Lightroom, in Photoshop, in Capture One, whatever it might be, you can add some light to certain areas, some darker shadows to others, and that can really help to kind of define either your subject or your landscape and really add some depth to what you're actually photographing. For example, this landscape, I've added some darker shadows to parts of the kind of rolling hills. I've added a little bit of light to the lighter parts where the sun was touching them, just to, just to kind of help out with how the light was falling. So nothing super crazy, not crazy photo manipulation, but just sort of adding on to what was already naturally there. But it really helps with a sense of depth to this landscape. You get these rolling hills, which feel kind of less flat a little bit more defined, clearer, and this light and shadow really works to help with that. Overall, it kind of comes down to personal choice. I think that adding depth to a photo can really enhance it, and I think thinking about it is the key thing, but there's no right or wrong answer here. If you don't want the depth in your photo, absolutely not a problem. In fact, I would say that the key thing here is not adding depth to your photo. It's just thinking about whether you would like to add depth or not, and why and how it affects the photo and what the end result's gonna be. And really, probably most of the tutorials that we do actually, the key thing is just making a conscious choice when you take the photo. That is generally the difference between a great photo and just a snapshot. If you've made a conscious choice, it doesn't really matter what the answer was that you came up with. It really just matters that you came up with an answer that you actually thought about it and did it. And that's exactly the same here. While depth can absolutely transform your photos, it is also not necessary for a fantastic photo. It is really just the process of thinking about it that's gonna get you across that finish line. Now there's links in the description to check out all the kit for this video and of course all the photos. Most of the photos we're taking on the lovely Sony a7 IV. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video as well. I always appreciate that. Of course, let me know down in the comments if you have any thoughts about depth in photos and anything you think we might have missed. Of course, like with a lot of tutorials, they're not, you know, if they were an hour long, maybe we'd go into more detail, but they're not. So we kind of scratch the surface. We can go into more detail maybe in a future video, but I'd love to hear any tips or any thoughts you have down in the comments. Of course, I will see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.